morning YouTube, it's Beck. It's Monday uh, in school holidays. I'm about to go and do some appointments with one of my kids. And actually it's with Otto and, um, no, not Otto. And we're gonna have some sushi train. So that it's something we like to do every holidays. I, why am I here? Oh. I wanted to say I'm going to share with you the projects that I've been working on and where I've got stuck on things. Um, so if you're somebody that gets stuck and thinks, oh, how come other people don't get stuck? We all get stuck. And I'm going to share exactly how stuck I am on something later in this video. But I wanted to say, why have I never watched Escape to the Chateau? I like to watch easy watching things like YouTube or um, I listen to podcasts or I like to watch Shits Creek because that's one of my favourite shows and I've watched it so many times I don't really need to pay a lot of attention while kind of in the background when I'm sewing and anyway Escape to the Chateau was recommended to me. It's amazing. I am loving it. I have since googled how much to buy a French Chateau and my husband's like maybe you shouldn't have just bought a shop in Newcastle if you're wanting to go and live in a chateau in France and where, where are the kids going to go to school? Fair points. Well made. Um, anyway, I'm going to show you what I've been working on. I wanted to share with you my latest project, which is a needle book. Now, I am not going to be a YouTuber that is able to show you my entire process where I'm stitching under a camera that's partly because I stitch in bed or um, in stolen moments so it's not really conductive to that kind of a video but I did want to show you what I've done here I use this beautiful piece of tablecloth um, that I had I don't think the colors are being done justice in this video which is a shame but um, originally I had it with no embellishment on the front that was the original plan and I actually put together the like joined on the sides the felt and the tablecloth and then decided to embellish a bit which was a little bit um of the wrong way of making it really but anyway so I've got some like vintage fabric up here a vintage yo-yo a gorgeous little um like little French embroidered embroidered, not embroidered, a uh, little crochet, very fine kind of lace work crochet. And then this little bit is just something, it's a lovely linen doily that I cut up at some point and I had this little bit of lace left and I put that on. And instead of a ribbon this time, because or a piece of lace, which is what I normally do and just kind of wrap it around, um, I decided to use this tiny little button that I had. It's made out of cloth. It is the cutest little button ever. And then I cut out its buttonhole and just sewed that together by hand. So these kind of projects I'm always making entirely by hand because what I love about them is that um, they are so portable. And my machine is not so portable, especially because mine is um, an industrial sewing machine. So it's quite heavy and bulky. But anyway, I just... I cut this out and then just stitched it by hand, like in terms of folding over raw edges and attached. And so when it does up, it looks like so, which I find quite pleasing. Um, you may be wondering why bits are sticking out. I really like it when um, it's not kind of perfect. I like the weight of the project. Mine, um, when I teach classes, I'm like looking for something that feels nice in your hand. And this one to me does. So mine is lined with this felted wool in a creamy kind of parchment colour. And then I have a piece of vintage lace that runs all the way through the book um, and forms two pockets. So I could put in here like, this might be too big, almost fits, like some like materials or like um, part of a block I'm making or papers if I was doing an English paper piecing project. But I have pocket front and back 
and it's just stitched on the side via um, blanket stitch. Sorry, I forgot my words for a second. But because it's lace, I have also, as well as the blanket stitch, which goes from the front to the back, I have also done some like kind of invisible stitching just to make sure it's nice and firm in there with a very fine cotton that I recommend a lot, which is Metla Silk Cotton. I stock it in my shop. It's out of stock at the moment. I've got a massive order in with the wholesaler. This little leaf also goes front to back, so it's seamed through the middle. This is just an off cut, I think probably of a, um, a hand towel, but it's got this beautiful vintage green, a bit of drawn thread work. I've just done a little bit of stitching on this side and I started putting this together in a class and there was a lovely lady at the class called Sandy and she just said, oh, does anybody want a snippet of, of this little Battenberg lace? Battenberg's not actually my favorite. I do like it when it's very fine through here um, and it kind of looks more lacy, but I do love to include a little bit of things from other people in a project. So this is, because I started in that class, that's a little bit of that Battenberg lace that I've just attached there. No reason really either, except that Sandy was in my class. And then this next piece also, where is it? Oh, yes. This next piece also goes all the way through. So it's set caught in the center seam. It's got some staining on it, some rust staining. I love some rust staining. Um, and I've just done a little row of French knots in here and a beautiful French blue, a little bit of stitching with a pearl 12 thread in kind of a red color. And on the back, I've done a little bit more of stitching with that uh, French blue attach this tiny bit of a broken doily, but very sweet little flowers, especially I love it when it's on a different colored base cloth. And then on the back of that, because I actually really like when you can see through like this, but under here didn't look so neat. So I had this tiny snippet of a vintage fabric. I don't throw any of those things out, um, especially vintage fabrics because they're so hard to get um so i just put this little bit over there and i quite like how that looks this was also an off cut but that lace to me is just amazing um it also goes from one end of the book to the other and this is the other side of it where i've just done a little bit of stitching in a cream pearl or ecru pearl thread up the top and then I've blanket stitched on and intentionally left a little bit not stitched because I think that looks kind of, I don't know, funky cool. Um, this little Minky Kim label that I have that says homemade on it because these books are really homemade and that's what I kind of love about them. I do love this little strawberry motif of Minky Kim. Um, we also have those in the shop if you're after those. So this one actually only has things that go right through. I hadn't realized that until I was just showing you. Um, I've now got another piece of wool felt, or felted wool actually. I've kind of edged some of it with blanket stitch. I've put a little bit of lace on here, a little bit more of that embroidery piece that I had. Very sweet, but this was really holy. And um, I love a holy kind of broken bit, but I didn't want to include like a holy like one with lots of holes that would get caught, but I did want to use those little bits of it. And on the back behind that, I've just attached a little brown yo-yo. Now this one was gifted to me by Sarah from Roxy's Creations um, when they visited the store. And I don't know, I love using bits and pieces as I've already said that people have gifted me. And this beautiful little butterfly piece, this is actually the back of it. This is how divine it is. Um, here was gifted to me by Jane when I was teaching down at Bella Fabrics in Melbourne. And I really loved it. 
she had a beautiful tablecloth I think with lots of butterflies on it and she I think she must have seen my eyes like admiring it and she said oh would you like a piece of this and look at it in here it's just gorgeous I um like to do this like stitching where it's uh instead of going straight up this kind of row of stitching you get that on the back but I do the stitch across and it's just a nice little um different kind of point of view now I turned this one over this way I would a more practical pocket would have been to fold it into the middle but it's just got a lovely little bit of kind of work there on that edge and so I didn't want to lose that so you could tuck like packs of needles in there or something like that and then I also added one more pocket with a piece of vintage feed sack on the back of that felted wool so this is my latest little needle book I'm quite pleased with it I don't know why I need so many needle books but I have a lot of them I'm going to show you sorry um the Hooswift that I am now working on now this horse with, I was going to do like as a kind of tutorial on YouTube and I've got lost and I really wanted to share that I've got lost or I don't know what to do because lots of people say to me, oh, how come you always know exactly what goes together or you've got such a good eye for this kind of thing? I don't, I, I do think I've got a good eye sometimes, um, but I also get absolutely lost like everybody else. So I started out with this beautiful piece of bark cloth, which I've embellished. And I gathered together, really wanted to use this kind of neon and natural linen um, from Merchant and Mills, a little bit of voil that's got a beautiful edge on it. And I think that's Anna Maria Horner. And I had some little bits of linen and a pink doily, some beautiful old lace kind of doily now. When it's broken like that, it's way more attractive to me than when it's absolutely perfect. So I love the broken holy bits, but you may not. I really do. Anyway, and I had some, oh, I had this gorgeous piece of embroidery, part of which is in my gosling quilt and it's got a blue flower there, but it had this lovely pink one and it's, it's a really nice um, weight of linen as well. And I thought maybe I'd put that in it. And so I stitched my panel and I love my panel. So this is not where I've gone wrong. I just camped the stitched across the whole thing and the texture of that is beautiful. And then I picked out all the golden features and the green features of the, the white daisy flowers with some very kind of naive embroidery. I've done some... Can see that very well um this one here is a weave stitch with actually some french knots in it sometimes just french knots in that one sometimes just weave stitch in that one and it it's quite naive it's it's really pretty i really like it now i always work because i'm i guess because i'm a quilter like i work i know that this is going to get drawn in by my sewing or my quilting or my stitching i guess um so I always work with my batting and my backing larger than my front piece. But I actually, when I did this, I only worked with a piece of batting and my front because I quite like to have the um, back different or the inside of the Hooswift different to the exterior. And then because I had this beautiful fabric, I pinned it down and started to plan it out. I had this lovely piece of embroidery that I thought would be a really nice pocket down the bottom of my Hooswift. Um, so it would finish, because remembering that it's like, like so, and then I got completely lost. I didn't know what to do. I'm not loving it. Um, I don't know. I When I was in Melbourne as well, there's a beautiful woman called Jenny, and I think her Instagram is called Create With Jen. I will link her. She was making these beautiful little drawstring bags and attaching them kind of to a Hooswift um, or a sewing roll. I'm not sure if she'd made them as part of Roxy's Journal of Creation, but she had these beautiful little drawstring bags and she just 
I like this one and then she made me take it home. She's incredibly generous. She's made me some beautiful things in the past. Um, and I gave her a little bit of fabric in, <laughs> like it wasn't a fair trade, I don't think at all. But she's put this together by hand. They're really handy because you can put your threads in there in your Swift and it's not going to come out of a pocket, even if it's a folded over pocket. And I kind of thought, oh, I'd make something. I wouldn't use Jen's in here because hers is on a white base and I'm kind of going for a more creamy base. And you can see that there with the daisies are uh, very cream compared to the white. Um, but I'd make something like this for in here. And then I just... I don't know what it is. I'm not loving it though. I do love this fabric. I've got a shirt made in it. Lucy made it for me, um, but I'm not loving it here. And then I thought the reason I'm working on this kind of very um, slubby or naive linen, which is a beautiful old French linen um, tea towel from France. And it's got some lovely embroidered initials on it is I thought, well, maybe I'll take this out and put this linen on the underside. And then I still, I'm not even sure about that. So is it the yellow that's throwing me? The kind of brightness of the yellow? I love a bit of neon, you may have noticed. Um, I'm not sure, but I am kind of lost with my hoose whiff, not sure where to go. I really love my exterior panel. And I mean, all of this is completely changeable because it's just pinned together at the moment. And so if I take these pins out, which I will do because I'm not liking what's there. You can see the back of the piece that I have stitched because as I said, I stitched the front separately to the back. So I think I might change it. I didn't, I also just, here's my original horse whiff, which is empty at the moment because I just finished that needle book and I haven't restocked it with a new project. I love this horse whiff. Like I love, love, love it. But I do think a drawstring, like I wouldn't have done it on this one because this is so pretty, but a drawstring bag in here might be really handy but is it going to be a problem if it's too similar to, if the next one I make is too similar to this one? I don't really know and I'm a bit stuck. Anyway, I thought people might like to see that I also get stuck. It's certainly not like a creative process kind of come and go in and out of various ideas and what you might like to make. And that I'm at the moment stuck on what I would like to make, which is why I haven't been making any progress. And then just because they're here, I take them out of my hoose with because they're a new project. I just wanted to show you some of the stuff that I, like how good my hoose with you is because this is all like little bits of beautiful vintage laces um, that I have and I keep in my hoose with so that I can embellish as I need. I've got a couple of beautiful vintage fabrics here. I love this one. Look at that green and that, I don't know, that green leaf. I'm such a sucker for beautiful fabric. Um, tiny bit of linen cut off, but it's a very nice linen. So I will keep it because I might use it for something. And also this tiny rickrack, like how cute is that? So I keep that in there as well because I might put it onto something. That's where I'm at, peoples. Um, hope you're going maybe a bit better with your projects and you're not stuck at the moment. I think partly it's that it's school holidays here, so I'm a little bit kind of challenged for time. Um, thank you to everybody. I might just say while I'm here that um, wished me luck with my son's 18th birthday. It went worse than we could have possibly imagined. It had to get shut down. It was completely out of control all these people turned up that weren't meant to be here. It was like it started off really well out of control, but like I kind of feel a little bit traumatized by the whole thing. And I mean, I say that word, sorry, I shouldn't say that word because for lots of people, trauma is um, part of their life that they're living with. I just meant I'm still a little bit recovering from 
how yuck that experience was for me personally. I like my home to be kind of organized and kind of semi-neat and it was just chaotic here. Anyway, happy stitching everybody. Look at the vintage things. I know every, I keep getting emails from people saying, can you put together more vintage kits? I do. I put them together as quickly as I can. I try and put them together with a mix of materials that I would actually make something from. Like if I was putting together a needle book, you would get kind of lots of things like this so that you could make a whole project from it. Um, and that takes longer than you might imagine. So I promise you I'm working on them. I do love making them, but I also love making quilt bundles. So I don't know. And if you're like these little labels, I think you need one. Like they're the best. Okay. Happy stitching, everyone.